Hello, Brentwood, 6th through 8th grade, Banditos. It's good to see you guys again uh, coming at you here on Good Friday, also my 40th birthday, if you can believe it. I don't feel 40. Um, let's get our, uh, get our day started here with a prayer. If you would bow with me, please. Father God, we're so grateful that, um, that you've given us so many blessings, including the gift of music. God, I pray that these kids at home are still growing and learning, and I pray that they're, uh, they're healthy and, and they're, they're doing, just doing great at home. Um, God, I, I thank you so much for all of the wonderful students we have at Brentwood and the blessing they are in my life. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, peeps, so this, uh, this sheepdog goes out and uh, tells his owner that he found all 50 sheep, and the owner says that um, there's only 46 here. What happened? And the dog says, well, I rounded them all up. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to talk about a new piece of music this week. Um, it's called a childhood hymn, and if you go into smart music, you will have this as an assignment in smart music, so it'll be really easy for you to find. Um, it's by a composer named David Holsinger, and David Holsinger is um, he's a, a music professor at Lee University in a city called Cleveland, Tennessee, which is near Chattanooga. Uh, I got the privilege of meeting Mr. Holsinger back when I was in college, um, about 20, 21 years ago. Um, really neat guy. He used to be a composer in residence at a church up near Dallas for a long time before he took the, uh, the college position. Uh, Mr. Holsinger has won tons of awards and he conducts and composes and travels the world uh, doing the whole music thing. So it's a, he has a pretty neat guy. Um, you can check out his bio at the Lee University website. And like I said, last week's composer, um, he's, he's still around. He's still uh, composing and, and conducting and, and working with kids and bands. And uh, I'm sure he wouldn't mind getting an email from you if you like his piece. So definitely go check that out. So let's look at the piece for a minute. I'm going to pull up the uh, smart music screen here. And this piece is in smart music. Um, you'll be able to hear uh, the band playing it to play along with them. Um, you'll be able to record yourself playing, which I hope you're willing to do, and submit that recording so I can hear you. And I'll remind you that when you submit those recordings, smart music will grade how many of the notes that you played correctly. That's not actually your grade, okay? So don't worry about that. If you don't have a great grade, I'd still love to hear you hear you play. So a childhood hymn is Holsinger's arrangement of the, the hymn, Jesus Loves Me, which I'm sure almost all of you uh, are familiar with. Um, and it's a really beautiful arrangement. He changes the melody just a little bit. He just changes some notes here and there. Um, it, it's really, it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely, beautiful arrangement. It starts off in the key of concert B-flat, so it should be pretty comfortable. Um, as you can see at the beginning, it says slow and expressive, legato in style. It's fairly slow the whole time. The rhythms are not very complex. There are some syncopations that some of you will have to look out for. Um, at measure 9, for instance, here in the clarinet part, you can see the, the rhythm 1 and 2, 3 and, and 1. So it's, just a, it's a pretty straightforward syncopation, just like we practice from our method books and in some of our, some of our, our music. So nothing too challenging. Um, when you play in smart music on this piece, I would encourage you to, to not play with the My Part feature on. Um, you can mute it, turn it on and off here, change the volume. Um, it's not quite in tune with the band, and it's, uh, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty rough sound. Um, if you need a little help with your part, you're not quite sure how something goes, that will t show you how, how the part goes rhythmically. So um, that can be a help for you if you need it but for the most part I would encourage you to practice this without that feature on. Um, occasionally Holsinger likes to use some mixed meter he's actually kind of known for that mixed meter meaning the time signature will change so in this piece there's not much of it but there's a spot like here where it goes into two four time um, the quarter note beat stays the same just we have two measures two beats in the measure instead of four Okay, so pretty straightforward. Holsinger has some of his more difficult music, has some really interesting um, meter, meter changes, we call it mixed meter. Um, so something that, that might be neat to check out. Holsinger does have other works on smart music if you do, if you like this one and want to check some other stuff out. There is a key change here at measure 22. It goes in the key of concert E flat. So look at your key, look at your key signature here. Think about what, what that means for you. What notes are different at 22 compared to the section before? Okay, so everyone will add one flat to their key signature or take away one sharp. Okay, so look out for that. In addition to that, we have some accidentals. And maybe, um, maybe you're in sixth grade and you haven't seen this note before. Um, Do you all hear Caroline in the background? Click on the note. 
click on this left button here and it will remind you what the fingering is for that note. Okay, so in this case, the A flat and clarinet, this is showing you, you use that little side key over there. And if you remember that on clarinet, the thing about the, key, the A, you use your first finger to play your A. The, um, the A flat is to the left of that, just to the, just to the side. And the A flat is just that key by itself. Okay, and so remember when you're playing those, all those extra alternate notes, you generally want to use the part of your hand that's going to naturally fall to that note. So don't lift your finger and then move it over. I wish I had a clarinet here to, to demonstrate, but leave your hand position where it is and then use that part of the finger that naturally wants to, to hit that part of the key. Okay, and so for every instrument, when you see a note like that you're not sure about, Smart Music can help you out. Click the note, click the fingering chart, and then you'll be all set. Okay. Um, so listen, as you play through this, listen to how Holsinger changes the melody just a little bit to get the kind of the mood, the feeling that, that he wants. It's a very gentle, lovely, beautiful piece, um, but with some really, really cool moments. Listen to how he uses accidentals to, use, to change some harmonies and have some really interesting chords um, to build, build some tension and excitement and, and to release. Look at measure 30 here. There's an important Italian word that every musician should know, allargando. But rather than me tell you what it is, I want you to see if you can figure it out. Okay, let's just listen to it for a moment. I'm going to click here. My part is off, metronome is off. I bet you can figure out what it means, but go ahead and look it up and see what, if you can find out the exact definition of Alarcondo and send me a note if you, uh, if you figure it out. Um, it's one of those really important Italian words for musicians to know. And then notice that right here we have another key change. We, we go back to our original key of concert B flat right here. Okay, so look out for that. Um, as you play this, um, there's not a lot of notey stuff. It's not tricky on the fingers, right? Um, the most important part of the music is playing beautifully, playing with a really good tone quality. So think about your tone quality before you worry about rhythms and notes. Are you making the most beautiful sound you can in your instrument? Are you using good supported air? Are you playing on a good reed? Uh, are you playing with a nice firm embouchure? All the stuff that you know how to do, put it all together to make the most beautiful sound that you can on your instrument. Okay. And if you listen to the whole recording in smart music, I want you to see if you can find there's one spot in this beautiful moment where there's a clarinet player that squeaks. So if you hear it, if you can find that spot, send me a note for some extra bounty points. Let me know where it's at. So I hope, you've, uh, I hope you enjoy uh, your week playing, uh, playing a childhood hymn by David Holsinger. Um, definitely know what you think of the piece. Um, use that looping feature to practice. Play through the piece a few times with the full, um, with the full band accompaniment. And then if you can, um, record yourself and send me a recording of you playing. I'd love to hear you play uh, so we can reconnect it in that way musically. And definitely uh, get in touch with me if you have any questions or if I can help you with anything um, related to um, band or a childhood hymn or setting up smart music or anything, anything like that. Okay? So you guys have a great week, and I will see you again next time. Bye.